Good evening, Assalamu Alaikum, and welcome to Sports Extra. I'm your host, Ahmed Nawaz. We've got a very exclusive and a very special show planned for tonight. We're going to be talking about the real game of kings. It's the oldest known team sports in history, dating back all the way back from the 6th century. And you know, it goes on. It started from Persia now through all parts of the world as well. We have in Pakistan, I think, one of the most beautiful polo grounds in the world, starting from Shandur, then coming to the capital, Islamabad. And you're seeing all these amazing pictures on your screens. We've got these fine three kings themselves in studio with us to discuss uh, more about this game, which is known as polo. And there's a lot more to it than what people think. You know, riding on a horseback is one skill. But then actually trying to play a game while you're on a horseback is something even more difficult. And to master all of this, I think uh, it's going to be uh, something that's going to take ages for a guy like me who's not into polo. But all of you who want to start this game can learn a lot about uh, polo from this show as well. You can talk about uh, all that you want to know as well. You can learn it as well. And then, of course, you can try to know the facilities that are here, especially in the federal capital, Islamabad, as well, to uh, come and play this game and to develop your skills and to try out whether you've got the skill uh, enough or not. We're going to be discussing all of this, but I am very, very honored to have these three kings, like I said, in studios with me, uh, two of them, of course, representing uh, uh, Argentina, and they're all the way from there. One of them from Argentina, obviously, we're going to discuss all their countries as well, but they're in Pakistan. They're playing polo in Pakistan, and they're taking back some great memories and obviously promoting the sport in Pakistan as well. And with them is a fine gentleman who is, of course, uh, from our very own country, and he's going to tell us more about that as well. And hopefully, we're going to learn how difficult it is to play polo at the same time as well. On my right-hand side, I've been joined with one of our guests for tonight's show. His name is Antonio, and he is all the way from a foreign country here to Pakistan. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, hola. How are you? Very good, thank you. How is, how is your time in Pakistan so far? Are you enjoying? Yes, very much. Yes. So you just told me that uh, before this, you went to Lahore, and this time you're in Islamabad. Yes. So I guess you've had a taste of both these cities by now. Yes, beautiful, beautiful right. country. And we also have the gentleman next to him is uh, going to be the person we're going to be talking a lot to, and he's going to be telling us all the initiatives that are here for polo in Pakistan as well, Mr. Shweb Zafar. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, alhamdulillah. So uh, uh, lucky enough, you've pulled two of them here. So yes. uh, what's the initiative like? Tell me about this. Um, basically, we are promoting um, foreign players to come and play in Pakistan, mm -hmm. which obviously uh, gives a good image. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, we need um, higher um, handicap players from mm -hmm. abroad. Obviously, you know, we, 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 are, we only have a limited number of them yeah. uh, coming from Lahore but, mainly. But everything's here, isn't it? The facilities, the resources, you know, we, we have... Yeah, yeah. This is... Actually, this is... Uh, this game is from Central Asia. Mm -hmm. So, um, these foreign... Britishers actually took them... Took it away. Took it they, away. We from, inherited yeah, it. So. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. We can boast about that as well. And also, we have another fine gentleman. His name is Ologio. Uh, he's from uh, another country and he's here in Pakistan, obviously, to play the sport and promote it as well. Ola, you know, Stardust, how are you? Uh, I'm very good. So, how are you enjoying your time in Pakistan so far? It's very good. Mm -hmm. How's the weather treating you? The weather now is okay. In mm -hmm. July, it's too hot. No? Too hot? Yes. Too hot to play polo or you can Impossible still Impossible to play polo. Impossible to Impossible. play polo as well. Right. Um, tell me about uh, when did you start playing polo? What, what was the age when you started playing polo? I started playing okay. when I was six years old. Mm -hmm. Yes. That in Argentina, yeah. Pretty tough for a six-year-old to play polo. Very difficult, no? Yes, yes. But in Argentina, it's yeah, a lot of uh, horse uh, but, culture. But and You had a lot of heroes growing up. You had Maradona, so you didn't follow football, but you followed polo. I followed polo, yes. Yeah, so, so that yes, must, exactly. That yeah. must be crazy as well. What about you, Shweb? When did polo come to you? Yeah, you'll be surprised to know I actually started last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is actually my first full season I'm playing uh, right. in, the, in the tournaments. Before mm -hmm. that, I was practicing and, you know, get, getting my horses in... In, mm -hmm. in order and in place. Right. So, yeah, it's been, just been a year. So, how has the year been? Do you think this is something which you really wanted to do? Do you think you found that? I think I'm just, I just started late. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's just, I mean, I just got hooked to it, onto it. Uh, it's a very addictive sport. Well, very yeah, addictive, yeah. definitely, for those of you. Well, Logio, when did you start playing for? Uh, I don't remember. You don't remember? Because in Argentina, I live in the farm, mm -hmm. and my family, mm -hmm. my grandfather was a polo player, my uncle is was polo player. Mm -hmm. So you come from a, a family of polo players. Yes. So th that that's cool as well, Shweb. So uh, if you're inheriting it uh, from your family line, it must be something special. But even if you're not, this is like you said, it's a game you get addicted to, but a lot of skill involved. I mean, like I said at the start of the show as well, 
riding on a horseback is one difficult challenge. Yeah. Then playing polo altogether becomes very difficult. Absolutely. I mean, I remember uh, in the last season when I was just playing uh, practice checkers, and my mother came to watch me play, and uh, she was like, oh, "This is like." Uh, you know, whole sk you, you you need to be on a horse, and at the same time, you know, play with the with the other hand. It's like a it's like a difficult mm -hmm. difficult job. And she was actually worried about me that you know I might fall off the horse or get injured uh, yeah, or something. Yeah. So it is difficult. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is yeah. difficult. You need to be really good horse rider mm -hmm. uh, just to play polo. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, stick doing stick and ball is uh, is like probably the ten percent. It's the rest of it is mm -hmm. just riding. Well, uh, Antonio, uh, Antonio, it's not just a, a person who's got the skill. As a player, it's not just you. Your horse has to be enough skillful as well. Yeah, the horse is, is mm -hmm. very important for, mm -hmm. for polo. They say it's like 70% of... The horse. Of, yeah, the horse. And 30% your skill. Yeah, exactly. You need to be fast and agile. Mm -hmm. yes, so and you need to love your horse like you love your car or anything else. <laughs> in the world. Yes, right? yes. It's a very good connection. And, mm -hmm. and we need a lot of horses also. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Yeah, uh, uh, same thing, you agree with that? I would say um, these guys actually are from Argentina and these guys look after their horses themselves. Mm -hmm. In Pakistan, we have this privilege, obviously. Um, we have, you know, workers, we have labor mm -hmm. to look after our horses. But honestly, if I, if I were to be in, into this long time back, I would have been looking after my horses myself. Mm -hmm. uh, because you need to love them just like you'd love your babies. Mm -hmm. So um, just, just like you mentioned, uh, loving your cars, that's mm -hmm. a passion, right? This is, this is actually a passion. So you cannot be just playing polo and somebody else is looking after your horses. That just does not happen. Right. Mr. Oliriaga, do you agree? Do you think, because you, like you said, you grew up in, on a farm and you're coming from a line of polo players. So naturally, you have to know your horse as well. Know what the strength is, what the weakness is to become a good polo player. See, sí, and then in Argentina, it's more easy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I train in the horses in Argentina and also in Pakistan. And so this, when you have good horses, it's more easy to play polo. Mm -hmm. It's more easy to improve, more quickly. Mm -hmm. The problem for me in Pakistan is don't have good training, mm -hmm. the horses. The horses is not, is not bad, but the training is so-so. No? Mm -hmm. Argentina, England, and America have better horses. No? It's more easy. Mm -hmm. And if you play polo in England, in Argentina, or in America, you improve more quickly. No? You improve quickly because you've got uh, definitely the resources <laughs> there as well. Uh, but injury must be a big factor, and but especially, uh, how is polo like in Argentina? If we talk about it, uh, is it very popular? Do more people play it, or is it just like a secondary sport? No, it is a secondary sport, mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's bigger than other countries, let's mm -hmm. say, because a lot of players, a lot of horses, we produce a lot of, of horses and, mm -hmm. and professional polo players, mm -hmm. because the country, yeah, is so big and there are a lot of polo clubs, mm -hmm. so yeah, that, that make it. Uh, right. Uh, in Pakistan, you said it's been a year since you're playing polo. Yes. So was it easy to get your hands on uh, a professional club, a professional facility? Because I, I, I do know, uh, living in Islamabad, we've got a great Islamabad polo grounds yeah. here in the capital. Uh, so do you think those facilities are yeah. adequate enough for a young person or a person starting uh, very late in his uh, years as well, just to get their hands on those facilities? I'll tell you what, I mean, the reason why I got into this sport was actually because of Islamic Club. Mm -hmm. So they have this facility, I became a member, and straight away they had some, you know, uh, Argentinian coach uh, offering classes at that time. And uh, I straight away uh, got enrolled, and um, uh, that's how I actually got into it. So Islamabad, I think the only polo ground we have is Islamic Club. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, and this uh, was inaugurated, if I'm not wrong, in 2014. The yes. first match was, plays in, was played in 2014. Mm -hmm. And um, it's only been five years. I mean, this is a great facility. Mm -hmm. But uh, traveling around now, definitely now you're involved in this sport as well. Uh, we've got Shandur, which is probably, I think, a dream polo ground for so many people because of its scenic beauties as well. So uh, you think we have the potential of getting more of these facilities, trying to promote the game even further? Because we have to agree that now it's a world sport. It's not limited to <coughs> just some countries. Um, yes, that's true. Um, but um, I don't know whether you have visited. Um, and a lot of people don't know about this facility in within the Islamabad club mm -hmm. because it's actually the entrance is slightly different. Uh, this ground is probably one of the best in the country. Mm -hmm. This was actually designed by by an Argentinian mm -hmm. uh, back in the uh, days, and he was hired just to uh, design and you know uh, do the do the do the grounds mm -hmm. and the architecture. Um, we as uh, from Islamabad club, we are trying to promote this facility more 
by actually going into the schools mm -hmm. um, after the season ends and uh, getting uh, kids to actually come and watch the matches. Mm -hmm. The grassroots levels. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because uh, this has not been done before. It's a very expensive sport. Mm -hmm. um, there is no doubt about it because all the horses are really expensive. If you want to uh, get into this, you need good horses. Just like myself, when I got into it, I had very normal mediocre horses, but you know, you can't improve. Mm -hmm. And uh, to get onto that level, you need good horses. Mm -hmm. um, but again, coming to your point, I mean, if Islamabad Club, Polo Grounds, they are offering this facility to their members, um, and uh, this is not actually bound on uh, just 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 the members, the so permanent it's not, members. It's not exclusive. It's no, it's, exclusive. it's no actually um, non-members of Islamabad Club can also use this facility by just getting the Polo Ship member. Mm -hmm. uh, the, sorry, the Polo member. Yeah. Uh, by becoming that member. Um, so, uh, so a, a private guy who is not an Islamic club member actually can come and uh, pay the fee mm -hmm. and you know uh, use the facilities. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's connected. To, uh, the entrance is with that saddle saddle club. Uh, no, it's not. No, no. I actually the yeah. first time I went, uh, it's a funny part. Um, after you know getting that email and getting myself enrolled, I thought mm -hmm. it's that is the entrance, but that's not. That's just mm -hmm. a riding club. Mm -hmm. So this entrance, there are two entrances to it. It's one very next to the sports complex mm -hmm. on the Kashmir Highway. And uh, the other one is uh, from uh, the back of the sports complex and mm. uh, very next to that. Right. So you've got those two entrances. Yes. So, uh, people who want to join that don't get confused. You know, you'll find your way over there as well. Uh, but uh, Anthony, you know, uh, grassroots level has to be where you've got to start with young kids. Because like you started playing polo at six, if you develop this skill at a very young level in your 20s or in your teens, you could be a very fine professional player. Yes. Like most of the sports, if you start Younger mm. is, is better for her. Mm. for her, but you can start at any age, you can enjoy it. Like, like he said, he started last year and mm. he get really, uh, yeah. He is enjoying, it. but he thinks yeah. it's too late, <laughs> he started. <laughs> no, it's, yeah, it's, never, it's never too late to start and it's, yeah. it's nice too. It's a nice sport, beautiful mm. sport. And uh, but getting to the competition as well, the fear of injury uh, is always there. Uh, you know, uh, being afraid of falling from your horse is something that might just stop you, but you've got to overcome that fear. So have you been involved in any injuries like that? Sorry, sorry? Have you ever been injured while playing polo? Have you ever fallen down from your horse? Yes, but it's a sport, no? Mm -hmm. The horse fall down and the people crash, mm -hmm. no? So you've got to recover from that. that, that that's much In that one year, uh, has there been any unfortunate incident with you? Um, <laughs> during the uh, tournaments, I would say during the matches, I haven't fallen, fortunately. Mm -hmm. But during practices, um, when I was obviously in the early stage, um, I've I've been off the horse like mm. three, four times. But practice is there, Shwe. But tell us about more about this tournament or, <coughs> uh, like you said, season of polos as well. I think it's very important for any sport that you develop a competitive <coughs> platform so you can practice all season long. But unless you're involved in a competitive game, you'll never be able to develop that skill. So what is the frequency of tournaments that we see in Pakistan in terms of polo? Um, in Islamabad, we have uh, some slightly extreme weather, mm -hmm. both um, summers and winters. Winters, yeah. So it's just not good for both the players and the horses. So we, uh, on average, play three months, mm -hmm. and then we have three months off. Mm -hmm. Then three months, and then again three months off. So effectively, six months a year we play. Mm -hmm. Um, it's uh, it's outdoor sport. We can't do much about it. You have to give rest to horses. You have to give uh, rest to players. And players are okay. They can always go and play somewhere else. The weather is okay. Just like some people play in Pakistan and go to Argentina because the weather is like opposite. Mm -hmm. um, but horses need rest. Plus, they cannot play in extreme weather. Mm -hmm. So, how many tournaments? Uh, is that one tournament a year? So, no, no, no. no. <clears throat> so, tournaments. The way it's um, divided is one tournament a week. Mm -hmm. uh, so, if it is like three months. Uh, there are what 12 um, uh, 12 odd uh, weeks so mm -hmm. 12 odd 12 uh, tournaments yes that, that's actually good that's yeah. a lot of so polo. it's actually not uh, the same level of tournaments every tournament is like different handicap mm -hmm. so there are low low goal tournaments high goal tournaments medium goal tournaments and where there are high goal tournaments these um, professional players, players and professional players are mm -hmm. brought in well, what is the difference antonino uh, you've seen in polo in the level of skill in argentina and here in pakistan Yes. in terms of the handicap or in terms of the polo be being played uh, or because you've played I think uh, in many other countries probably as well. Yes. So what is the difference between our polo and the polo at international level right now? Um, no, not much. The difference makes the, the, <laughs> the level of the tournament. Mm -hmm. So in, in a, the level of here is similar to the same level playing in, in Argentina or mm -hmm. in, in England I played also. Mm -hmm. They have very good players here also. So. Yeah, so, but the higher level here is eight, eight goals handicap. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and it's good level. So, yeah, it's similar that level. In other countries, they play higher level. That is the only difference because mm -hmm. they have higher handicap players, and you can play, yeah, more polo, more develop more skill. Yes, to get and to it's a higher level of, of mm -hmm. tournament, but the the level here is very good, and mm -hmm. yes. So, so uh, how how has been Pakistan uh, been for you? Uh, have you enjoyed being in the capital Islamabad? How have you, have you been able to see the place around as well? Say for me, Islamabad is the best city in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. It's more uh, cleaning, the sky is blue, mm -hmm. the weather is better, the club is amazing, mm -hmm. the ground is very good, yeah. it's fun. And the weather? How's the weather compared to Argentina now? Uh, now it's okay, but mm -hmm. it's impossible. In summers? <laughs> Harsh summers? It's too much for a horse. Too much for the horse and for the player as well. Probably. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but too much for the horse, definitely. But that's why, uh, like Shreve mentioned as well, you've got to give rest to your horse as well. Uh, it's not a machine at the end, you know, it's a living thing and you've got to treat it at the same uh, time with that same compassion as well. But one thing that really uh, Shreve comes as a hurdle, uh, expensive sport, which you talked about. It's not easily it accessible. It is not easy. And plus, I'll tell you something, it's in our culture that we, you know, we have to study, if you're studying, if you're young, we have to work if we are, you know, uh, an adult, mm -hmm. um, and we take sports as a secondary thing. Mm -hmm. But polo is not a secondary thing. You have to be involved in it, and it's really time-consuming. Mm -hmm. Apart from being expensive, you really have to be involved all the time because obviously you're you're managing a horse, which is a living, you know, mm -hmm. a living being, and you have to look after their health. Uh, and you know, horses are the most delicate animal. Um, mm -hmm. So every now and then they have issues. You have to look after. You have to look after the grooms. You have to look after the riders, the trainers. It's just is it's not as simple as as it mm -hmm. seems like. So it, it takes all a whole lot of time. And the diet comes in as well, not just for you but for your horse at the same time. Oh yeah, time. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so how how important do you think uh, is that factor? Because we've been talking a lot about this, and uh, I think it's always important that you know your equipment you're playing with. Uh, like you said, it's important to know your horse at the same time. But you did say that we're privileged enough that we have people to look after our horses. Do you think yeah. we'll be able to develop that culture once we start working with grassroots levels where people can actually understand their horse at the same time? As yeah, well? I mean, you have to be involved um, at the grassroots level. Look, if, <coughs> excuse me, yeah. if I'm, I'm, I'm actually 35 years old now. Mm -hmm. If I'm getting into this at this age, I mean, if somebody, say, about 15 years old gets into this, it's a different, a whole lot different um, uh, altogether. So, making a child understand the process from the very beginning is obviously uh, mm -hmm. much more, uh, you know. Uh, In detail, you can. Yeah, go absolutely. Yeah. yeah, they, they would know more. Um, they will. They will grasp more. They will learn more. Mm -hmm. They'll have more time. And you know, at, at, when you when you're a teenager, you have more ability to mm -hmm. you know, adapt things and throw yourself around more. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Probably. Absolutely. Yeah. But I'm no. sure you you're fit enough. You just said 35. I was. I think you looked in your 20s right yeah. now. Yeah. You've Thanks been able to maintain, you know, you've maintained yourself. Yeah. That, that's very important. Thank you. Uh, how important is it, uh, Antonino, to maintain yourself in this game at the same time with your diet, whatever you're eating? Because I guess uh, you can't be very bulky and ride a horse at the same time. Yes, no, you need to stay, stay fit and, yes, and mm. agile for, for, yeah, to play and for the horse also. You cannot be, mm. yes. And the diet of the horse needs to be looked after at the same time as well. Yes, yes, they need, they need to be strong and, and powerful, but mm. also light in the mm. movement, so. Yeah. So, uh, uh, if we just uh, go to one of the basics, if we want our fans, uh, you know, just to, uh, the viewers need to know as well. Uh, what's, uh, how can you define the game of polo? Like one game of polo, how can you define it at the easiest level for a player? Okay, so for, for a layman, I would uh, say it's um, um, one match. I will just start from the one match just to give an idea. They have four chuckers. The minimum is like four chuckers. They play four chuckers. Mm -hmm. uh, and each chucker lasts for seven minutes. Um, but seven minutes is actually a playing time. Mm -hmm. So if there is a whistle um, for a, for a foul, uh, the game stops. Mm -hmm. And obviously, uh, when the, uh, there's, a, there's a whistle again, it's continuation starts. Again. Starts so, it. so on average, it's about 15-20 minutes of uh, one chucker. Mm -hmm. uh, but the playing time is actually the playing time is seven minutes. Mm -hmm. And so you can calculate it's about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes um, of the play mm -hmm. uh, for one for one match. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Every day there are like a couple of matches in our ground, but maybe if you know there's uh, uh, there are more tournaments and there are more matches, maybe there. Are so that makes it, I I think, almost an hour of play in one match. Yeah, probably. on average, yes. 
So that, that's a lot of endurance. Oh, for it is, you yeah. And, your horse at this and you're flying on the horse all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I mean, the, the, the higher the handicap uh, um, tournament it is, um, uh, the, fast, the faster the game is. Mm -hmm. uh, and the lower the tournament is, obviously, you know, then. Uh, so, the how game many goals would you say you have to your name by now? Uh, that's difficult to <laughs> calculate. I've uh, hardly played. Uh, um, I would say um, a goal uh, a match mm -hmm. on average. On average, yeah. that's your. But, but uh, do we differentiate this at the same time as because we four chuckers like you mentioned, we can uh, you know translate in, into four halves as well. So yeah. how how uh, how uh, do you see? Are there positions at the same time as well? Like we have positions in different sports. So do you have positioning uh, in, in your team? Polo, well? yes. And how many yes. uh, players a team? There are forward know? players and there are uh, players being playing at the back. Mm -hmm. um, but the idea is to actually be uh, on top of the players from the opposite team. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's not really running after the ball. Man-to-man mm. uh, -man marking. So it is the man-to-man -man marking, yes. Yeah. Because uh, obviously, we make this mistake wh wh whilst I was learning mm -hmm. uh, that we have to run after the ball and catch the ball. No, it's not like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to take the man. If you take the man, you get the ball automatically or mm -hmm. your player gets the ball automatically. Mm -hmm. um, so, this is how it's played. It's, 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 you have to strategize. And how many players per team? Four. Four players yes. per team. So, you've got eight players competing Absolutely. Uh, in total yes. at the same time as well. Uh, Antonina, how many goals would you have scored? A thousand goals up till now, probably? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, which position do you prefer playing? Is that forward or is that at uh, the back? No, at the back. I at prefer the back. to play at the back, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what about you? At the back or forward? In Pakistan, I play at the back. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. in Argentina? I prefer playing attack, number one or number two. So, why do, you, why do they keep you at the back in Pakistan? Yeah, because in Pakistan, if you play the back or if you play the number three, you have more control of the game. Mm -hmm. But in Argentina, the polo is more classic mm -hmm. and it's more easy. And I prefer playing attack. Playing attack. So here you need uh, your probably most experienced player at the back. Yes. You just, to, just to balance it out. That's smart. So yeah. you're getting uh, international players and uh, giving them the, a strength role at the back and you guys playing forward at the same yeah, time. Yeah, we, this is the way to learn as well. This is the way yeah. to learn. Playing forward. Yeah. Attacking, forward, yeah. <laughs> attacking polo. Getting at the, the same. passes from these guys. Getting the passes and yeah. just chucking it in and yeah, scoring. Yeah. A goal. <laughs> That's the way that, to do it. That, 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 that would be nice. But what's the celebration like once you score a goal? I'm pretty sure you can't just come close <laughs> and high five each other. Is, is it your horses doing that? No, no, no. You, in, uh, you can't celebrate because you're on the top of a horse. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's just like, you know, maybe it's the emotion you can just share, but uh, nothing else. Nothing. But what are, what are the emotions, Anthony? You know, are you emotionally involved like any other sport? We see football, uh, we see rugby, we see so many other sports where a player is very emotionally there. Yeah. In polo, is it the same as well? You're emotionally very there in the game. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, yeah, for me, polo is my life. So mm -hmm. it's. Yeah. And that's all you've played, so that it, the emotion really gets to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. At the same time as well. Mm -hmm. And for you, is it emotional? Yes, yes. The connection is there? Connection for the horses, it's very good. Mm -hmm. So once, uh, whether you get injured or your horse, it feels the same probably, yes. because you're owning your horse at the same time as well. So, you know, that's why I think they call it the game of kings as well. You, uh, it's there for a reason. <coughs> uh, Shweb uh, very practically mentioned it for us, four players aside. Then you've got the goals as well, and then uh, obviously the positioning of it forward and playing at the back gets very important at the same time as well. Just to you know, hang on to the game itself is very important. Uh, Shweb, uh, how is that one year been now for you? Because you're developing a skill, and you intend to, I'm sure, play uh, in the future as well. Are you looking forward to traveling a lot and playing uh, in other conditions at the same time as well? I think that will be the best for myself mm -hmm. um, because um, that's the only way you can learn more. Mm -hmm. um, playing in maybe UK, Argentina, mm -hmm. Spain, US. Um, look, every, every club is different. Mm -hmm. Every uh, country is different. Mm -hmm. You get different players. Over here, maybe there is a you know, limited number of players I play with. Mm -hmm. But when I go abroad, there are you know, a whole lot of clubs. And uh, the skill, the pace of oh, yeah, polo gets yeah, different. Uh, the the even the horses. Mm -hmm. um, they're all different. So that's how you learn. That's how you learn. Yeah. And you intend to continue this. Yeah, absolutely. You started late, but you want to yeah, carry yeah. this on. <laughs> I want to probably get to that level at least. Get to the, inshallah. Yeah. I sincerely hope. But yeah. once you're committed to something, I think the focus is what counts. Yeah. And these guys are very emotional about it. The, yeah. the little I'm talk, getting there. <laughs> the, the little talk I've heard about them. Uh, so, while your time in Lahore and now in Islamabad, have you tried any local culture, local cuisines, any good food from Pakistan to eat? Yeah, yes, yes. What did you have? Oh, I don't remember the names, but uh -huh. yeah, I tried. You tried it? How yeah. do you like Pakistan's food? 
Very good, yeah. A little bit spicy sometimes, but yeah. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, it's no, good. mostly spicy. Yeah, yes, mostly. <laughs> well, so d definitely a difference. So what about you? Uh, impossible. The food is impossible. <laughs> food is impossible. impossible. You don't like it at all. No, like, no, no, I is it make. because of the spices? Too spicy. Uh, make them have lassi. They should have had lassi. Actually, um, we eat with them and they, be, they eat with us. Mm. So um, whenever we... They, actually, they do really good barbecue. Oh. And the way they, they cook the meat, mm -hmm. There is absolutely no spices. It's mm -hmm. only in maybe in salt maximum. Mm -hmm. That's the maximum they go to. So obviously, any bit of spices, they can't bear. They can't. And I've seen them, you know. <laughs> so maybe they're giving you spices to make sure you don't play yeah. at the end. They want to keep you out of the game. Yeah. But uh, that that's cool. They do a different bar good barbecue. That's a good yeah. Oh yeah, they're, they're very mm -hmm. excellent at barbecue. So you've made them try that as well. Yeah, yeah. So you're not just treating them to hospitality, you're getting yourself treated yeah, as well. Yeah, yes. we share our, uh, you know, cuisines. <laughs> cuisines. As, uh, and uh, how uh, do you like the culture? Do you like the people as well? You think? No, it's very good. The people is, is very fun. Mm. Uh, all the people, the group, the, the, the Pakistani people. Mm. Yeah, it's very fun. You, you, have you had the similar experience? The people all around, have you felt that love and care? Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yes. So I, uh, does that make you come to Pakistan more often? Yeah. Yes, yes. Again yeah. and again. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Right, so uh, one thing we need to understand as a career, if you want to become a polo player, that's, that's a career for you as well. Uh, can you actually develop it as a professional career at the same time? Because we do have an international federation for polo as well. Yes. Um, if you really want, if someone wants to get into this, why not? Um, but then take it as a, take it as a field. Mm -hmm. Just like anybody takes uh, engineering or medical as a field, mm -hmm. this, this has to be a field. But like you, you have, have, no, to, you no, have to be passionate about no it. No part time. Nothing no, no, part no, 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 no. You can't do this part time. Mm -hmm. no. When you have to become a professional, then you're like you know on the horse in every country. So is the official part of it also involved as a player? You're there, but are there officials also involved in this? Like you said, obviously there's somebody's got a call of foul as well. Is that also a career at the same time? Because we've been developing polo, polo players, but if we develop officials at the same time, it, it gives us... No, uh, in, in polo, how it happens is uh, the umpires are actually the players themselves. Mm -hmm. um, but not in this, that tournament. Mm -hmm. um, they are like high goal um, uh, handicap players mm -hmm. um, who are umpiring because obviously they would know uh, the fouls. The dynamics of it. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's not like cricket. In uh, cricket, we have separate field of empires. Mm -hmm. um, in polo, it's, it's the players actually who are empiring at the same mm -hmm. time. Right, so it uh, definitely you've got to be at that skill level to judge. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And if you, you know need to know, rules, yes. if you know the rules, that's Yeah, a, you need to know inside so out. So what's the penalty for a foul if you commit a foul? Uh, it depends actually. Uh, and, it, and this is the only game where the penalty is dependent on the player as well. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a low goal handicap player, so the, the empire has to make a decision, a uh, judgment call, mm -hmm. that if I was to hit that ball, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, if I get the uh, foul in my favor and if I was to, to hit that ball, how far will it go? Mm -hmm. So there are penalties like 30 yards from the goal, 60 yards from the goal, so 40 yards from the goal and 60 yards from the goal and even 5B which is like middle of the ground. Mm -hmm. um, so it really depends. I mean, it depends on the scenario. Um, there, are, there is even a spot penalty. So it depends. I mean, sometimes do, two umpires don't even agree to each mm -hmm. other. So they Different have to refer to a third umpire. Uh -huh. um, and uh, sometimes uh, one, if there's a disagreement, uh, they okay say they say okay well, it's just a throw in there is a, uh, probably no foul that's why it's a game of kings you can actually settle it amongst yourselves as well yeah you do yeah mm -hmm. i mean there, there are empires obviously and this is a very aggressive game by the mm -hmm. way i mean if there are no empires i would imagine people <laughs> going crazy yes yeah, i would look more like a knights uh, battling each other yeah, than yeah. Polo. no it's a very aggressive game yeah. right so uh, definitely going to the wrap up of the show uh, antonino is there any message you'd like to give to the young people who want to start polo any message at all um yeah just Come to the club if 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 they can and, and try it and watch and mm. yes get yeah get involved get involved get yeah. involved yes uh, would you like to give any message to the players out there especially the young ones who want to start polo and don't know what to do I start before I start ride the horses mm. if you ride the horses good it's more easy yeah, yeah. and then sticking ball eh, every mm. day and no more. No. Yeah. Practice, so, only practice. So your horse has to be your first priority. Yes, if you have Definitely. horse and you practice every day, mm. you ride right. polo. And Shweb, final notes, anything you want to tell these people out there, especially about the facilities that are yeah. there in Islamabad? Yeah, so uh, basically Islamabad Club Polo Grounds, um, they, are, uh, um, they will start this campaign, mm -hmm. going to schools, bringing them onto the ground, involving their parents, obviously, uh, mm -hmm. because they have to afford it. <laughs> yeah. um, and we are um, doing this campaign to get people uh, mm -hmm. on board, because this facility, I mean, in, I would say in uh, Pindian Islamabad, you will never get. It's, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful facility and uh, beautiful staff, 
I mean, amazing people, amazing coaches. We've had coaches uh, from UK, Argentina, Spain, um, um, all these. Uh, I mean, m myself, I was actually trained by an Argentinian coach. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have this facility available. I, I would say people should come and uh, watch the game. Every Sunday there is a final mm -hmm. uh, because every week there's a new tournament, mm -hmm. uh, and it's gonna um, go up till like December mm -hmm. in in uh, Islamabad. In Lahore obviously continues through the winters because winters there is not like as extreme as in Islamabad. As in Islamabad. Uh, but yeah, um, we will be reaching out to uh, these institutions, mm -hmm. and um, I would uh, from your uh, program, I would uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know. In, uh, inform these g people who are interested to watch this game, mm -hmm. uh, please do come to the grounds um, and watch the game. And like you said, it's open for everybody. Who it is, yeah, it is open that's, for That's That's a great part of it. It's not an exclusive facility, like definitely the club is, but you can actually get your hands on the facility, learn from international coaches, and I think it's a great time for you to get involved in this sport. It is the game of kings, and if you ever wanted to be a king, this is your time to shine. Shweb, thank you very much. I think it's been great talking to you, getting thank all... You the help that we can for young polo players and I'm sure you're going to have a lot of fans out there who are going to be trying to find Shweb and yeah. you know, getting them to uh, uh, you know, get, get to learn from you yeah. and your hands-on experience yeah, as well. Thank you for No, no, it's been great. Uh, Antonino uh, and Ulogio, gracias. Thank you so thank much. You. It's been great having you on the show and we sincerely hope that you get used to our spicy food <laughs> if it's ever happening. Yeah. But your barbecue is definitely going to be a major favorite in Pakistan, I guess. Yeah. Right? Thank you very much, gentlemen. That's all we have time for for this edition of Sports Extra. You've learned from the three kings themselves why uh, this game is so important. And what's the best part of it? And what's the most important part of it at the same time as well? You've got to know your horse. I think that's very, very important. You've got to know your horse. You've got to care for it. And that's how you're going to succeed in polo. But the facility is there. Shweb highlighted it. It's there for everybody to join in and then get your hands on that equipment, on that horse, and definitely try to try your skill if you can be a good polo player or not. From me and the entire team, it's goodbye for now.